Hello everybody, Tim Knight here, obviously. Um, I feel a lot better than I look. Uh, I, um, this is just kind of a hack. Obviously don't have a professional studio or anything, but my, my little fireside chats have gotten um, warm reception. So I thought I would um, just share some more thoughts and this time without any charts at all. Because I think what we've seen this year and even over just the past few days is remarkable and worthy of some commentary. So if you're interested, I just have some uh, off-the-cuff things to say. As before, this is unscripted, unrehearsed, and I don't even outline this. It's just me talking off the top of my head, but hopefully it won't be a complete waste of our mutual time. Um, there has been, I think, a sea change in the kind of market that we're existing in and that we trade within. And as I've said, I think a potent... Um, litmus test for this is by way of slope and my own subscriptions. And I'll just say again, in case you hadn't heard it before, in in March of 2020 and up till early April, I had an absolutely explosive movement in the, uh, in the subscription chart. Um, it's my favorite chart. It's the most important chart in my life, like how many people actually pay to use slope hope. And it was something I'd never seen before. It was absolutely vertical. It's like the whole world decided that uh, Slope, which is kind of less admitted, known as kind of a bare website, um, is going to be the place to be. And they piled in like mad. And from April 2020 until pretty much November of last year, it was just a slow grind lower. And it wasn't the same people, but basically that quantity of people that piled in all left. And understandably so, because, you know, even though the tools are good and the charts are great and I try my best to provide good content, they figure, well, I guess the bear market's not going to happen. And in this instance, even though the bear market has gone on way longer, because the so-called bear market of 2020 literally was like, honestly, you could, you could put it like to seven days, seven very specific days that constituted the entire move, and that was it. This has been going on for uh, weeks, if actually months now. The Nasdaq bear market really started in November. So we've got about a half year bear market on our hands so far. In spite of the longevity of this real bear market, and in spite of the, the higher quality of this bear market, because it's vastly better to trade, the subscriptions, you know, they're up, and I, God bless them, I appreciate it but it is slow and plodding and trickling in and all that other stuff because they don't believe it anymore. They, the people, on the whole, people just do not believe that a bear market is possible. And it's easy to understand why, because for uh, decades, and certainly the last 13 years, they've been spoon fed the idea that stocks really do only go up and that falling markets are an opportunity to just buy more. And the popularity of the products and services of Kathy Wood and Jim Cramer and Dave H. Contrarian and uh, CNBC and all the rest is indicative of the fact that they just don't believe it. You know, the de facto is the bull market. The de facto is persistent, perpetual inflation of asset values. So they don't believe it. And, you know, it's nothing against me. It's just a disbelief that such a thing is possible. And I do believe it is possible. And not only do I believe it's possible, you know, I've been doing this my entire adult life. And as I've said over and over again, I've never seen a top like this. I've never seen one bigger. I've never seen one as well-formed. And I've certainly never seen one that was formed at such incredible heights from real value. So, you know, people have referred to this as the everything bubble for years. The everything bubble has popped, and its deflation, I think, will be probably a couple of years in the making. So, what prompted me to do this video was behavior. We must change our behavior in order to prosper in this, because the old behavior was defensive. And understandably so. The old saying about picking up nickels in front of a steamroller. It was defensive because the whole world was against us, you know, namely the Fed. And so any opportunities to try to profit on the short side were very short-lived. 
and you better just, if you get a little profit, you just take it, run, and thank your lucky stars for the 3% that you made. Now we're in an environment where, as I've said on my Tasty Trade Show today, the paradox is that it's really, really easy and really, really hard at exactly the same time. The easy part is to do nothing. That's kind of boring to do nothing, and it's scary to do nothing because you're afraid of like what happened last Wednesday. We'll just start a huge rally and go on and on and on. So that makes it hard because it is scary, but it's easy because you know, passivity is you know, de facto um, simple because it doesn't involve any effort. Um, in a funny way, I actually today I actually did nothing quite well. Um, I actually started the day off uh, with some cash laying around. I deployed the rest of it. I had no money left to use, and it was the best day in years. Um, and that's a good feeling. But uh, here's the real thing. If you have followed me at all, you know that I tend to be kind of a bottom-up type trader. Um, I don't declare that the market as a whole is going to do the following. Instead, I do things on a chart-by-chart -chart basis and let the charts take care of themselves. For example, just about the only thing I closed today was big lots, symbol big because it just seemed to me that oh, that's about all it's going to go down and I'll just take profits, be done with it. And, uh, but on the whole, chart after chart after chart, it's like, oh, this, this is just beginning to fall. It's got way more to do. And so I would say that in my heart of hearts, and if truth be told, if I simply shut everything down and closed everything and just stopped looking and promised myself to come back, I don't know, say Labor Day, and see how things are going, that would probably be best. I would probably do better, and it'd be a lot less work. But it's a lot less fun too, isn't it? Because uh, what I'm saying is that um, you and I messing around with things is what uh, really diminishes those profits. And my pain members today uh, know that via a post I did, called, the, I call it like the triple percentage club or something like that. I showed the dozens and dozens and dozens of put options that I've closed in the past just couple of months that are up 100, 200, 300, as much as 350% after I dumped them. And, uh, you know, again, passivity in a market like this definitely helps. So, so it's not to gobble up your whole day. I'll just start to wrap up here. So here's where things stand for me right now, portfolio-wise. Um, 37 bearish positions, all buying power deployed. Um, it almost seems deceptively simple and almost like a trap, this whole 3,800 thing. But every time I look at it, that is the level that makes sense on the ES in order to get out. Now that's the other painful thing. Let's just say this week we get to 3,800. You know, there's something that stinks about um, closing the positions. It's sort of an affirmation of, well, the party's over for now. And it's kind of like that line in the Apocalypse Now where Kilgore looks off in the horizon and says, someday this war is gonna end. And that's the feeling that I think is captured there. Um, but it needs to be done. So if we do get to 3,800, the right thing to do, and it'll be hard for me, but I'll try my best, is to just get rid of everything. And um, maybe even participate in the bounce if you want to be really greedy about it. Um, or just set aside and do what is almost impossible for me, which is to be patient and wait for the rally back up to, I don't know, 4,300? I have no idea. Something like that before really getting aggressive and getting the, the big, big, big swoon of 2022, which I think will be at that time. So I'll close here by saying between now and let's say the election, I think there are um, three giant moves in the store. I think we've got the, the end of this move, you know, a couple hundred more points. I think we've got a big counter turn rally, and then I think we've got the big kahuna. So that'll all be fun. But our behavior has to change because the market's changed, and I think it's changed for the better and for a while. So I'll end it here. Thanks for being a part of Slope. Bye-bye.